where the gap is dissipating to the Well, at the pavilion you saw all those cavern systems and, and we talked about, I talked about the, the uh, water in the rivers getting into the well. Well, if they have a leak here, it's going it, to, they're 60 um, feet under this surface right here. It's not going to go into the air first. No, it's can it? It's on the ground. It's going to into the aquifer. It's going to go into those spring conduits, into the wells, and then it goes into people's homes in the air. Uh, and I want to bring up one thing that most people aren't familiar with. Sea level is 300 feet lower. <clears throat> All this limestone below our feet, the sinkholes that we see now aren't from brand new stuff, they developed when sea level was way low. So, for instance, I drilled the well for the, for the waste site in Swanee County going to White Springs. And I have a cable tool rig. I went down 260 feet and never hit any rock. I had to hire another rig to come out and drive casing. We never hit rock. We stayed in that sinkhole almost 300 feet. And, and that, you know, is common, Peacock Lake. You know, all these lakes are collapsed features, peacock happens to be collapsing down to that 300 foot level because all the wells around there are very deep and difficult to, uh, to put in. So it's not just that we're talking, he's going underground 60 feet and, there's, you know, and he's safe because he's in that limestone. He's going underground 60 feet and he's going to hit a, possibly a conduit that's 100 feet deep. You know? yeah. and these fracture traces are probably thousands of feet deep because they're part of the Ocala uplift. From a, from a geological standpoint, there's no way to predict what's between here and there as far as those caverns or conduits, right? The conduits, yes. I mean, can you caverns, pick it up no. from land sat satellites, yeah. any of that? Not necessarily. You, you look at these fracture traces and you know that they're along these fractures. The fractures go deep. When they're three, below 300 feet, they're probably just a fracture trace, like they say because they never encountered that tannic water that mm -hmm. erodes it, but you know, through the eons from there up, they have. And so you can predict caverns in the sense that there's a fracture trace, you know there's going to be caverns below it. But, you know, every well driller will tell you they never drill a well without hitting, you know, caverns. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they're not big there. Right. Dennis, another thing to possibly consider about these um, drillings is if you do have a collapse under the pipeline and it only creates a very tiny leak, that puts it in under to the company. And it could leak literally for years and years and travel underground for a long period of time before it's ever detected. And when it does show up in someone's well, there's no accountability. Oh, well, and what's the pressure in the park? Does anybody know? Uh, it's it's the 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 high pressure. David Shield. Yeah. Oh, he's on the There yeah. He knows the exact horsepower, but I believe it's uh, I don't remember. driven by like 40,000 horsepower. Two compressors each of around 20,000. Uh, horsepower. So it's, it's pretty it's enormous pressure. Yeah. What's the? Do you know the pressure that's in the pipe? 1400 psi. Okay. Yeah. So the incendiary range at 1400 psi in a 36 inch pipe is 3,000 feet. So basically, 3,000 feet in either direction uh, would be a mandatory evacuation because it would destroy it within a few minutes. So uh, you know that was concerned with the compressor station because the compressors are operating at 21,000 horsepower per compressor, and so that's a quarter mile from our house or mm -hmm. the proposed site. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that's, that's a, a huge 3,000 3, feet 3, incendiary feet. range, yeah. And you're only a quarter mile? Yeah. yeah we, he's yeah. behind me. Yeah. We would safe. disincinerate. <laughs> <laughs> We're real safe. And just so, the, um, I, I don't know what their mitigation plan for that is, mm -hmm. you know, but the compressor run, site run, just run. popped off in PA a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Right. You know, they say they're safe, but well, yeah, they keep right. they keep yeah. on blowing up, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, just the event of the gas escaping is enough yeah. to cause combustion. You sure. don't have to have a spark or anything. Yeah. It is a you know, physical yeah. fact that it can combust by that rapid release of pressure. Well, they have plenty of spark because they're building this compressor site under the power easement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have no, uh, if there's a catastrophe, so. there's nothing to take care how, of. How far away are you from it? A little less than a half a mile. He's yeah. kind of behind me. In that event that just happened in Pennsylvania, it melted siding on houses half a mile away. Yeah. yeah. And
in addition to it incinerating the house and sending the owner to the hospital with third degree burns. And the first responders couldn't get within a quarter mile of it because of the heat. Oh, yeah, man. The same thing happened in Perry, Florida, where I was yes. living about 10 years ago in the gas plant. I just, one morning I was outside, I was at 12 miles away from it, and I thought it was. It just was huge oh, yeah. on that side. It's this huge cloud. Yeah. And then it was a long time before we could go and look at it. But it incinerated homes, you know, it just it was just. That was in Perry? Uh, yeah, 19.4 million in, in property damage and several people injured and houses affected. Yeah, that's the knowledge of the house. The inspectors already said, too, that they're not going to assume responsibility uh -huh. for any of that kind yeah. of damage, too. Exactly. They're right up front in saying that. that it's an LLC. Yeah, the, the Swanee damages. County Safety Officer hasn't even been contacted by a specter about any sort of mitigation or how to handle this type mm -hmm. of crisis. So, I mean, the, the fire chief is like, they haven't even talked to us about the pipeline and what it means to us and what we have to be prepared for. So, I mean, I have no they, idea. They have no idea. People live in Swanee County. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Did you guys get the notice? that they said they sent out that went to the city of Swanee instead of the county residents of Swanee? Yeah. Nobody got that? Okay. Yeah, yeah the, the original notice went to Swanee, uh, the yeah, town of Swanee. The town of Swanee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's the same thing. The compressor site is called the Hildreth Compressor Site, and Hildreth is actually over in Gilchrist, Right. And we're in O'Brien, so if I think if they called it the O'Brien compressor site, which would be a proper label, then more people would be showing up to say, hey, we don't want this. But that's <laughs> they have no clue it. it's even there. They right? have, yeah, most, they have no idea. So. Yeah, they're saying, well, hell, they're far away. So. so there's been a little deception, I think, in, in terminology. Yeah. And, and, yeah, the uh, Vanillin compressor station is actually on State Road 200, not in Vanillin. By the river. Real close. Uh, let's continue right, on. Yeah, let's we got a couple more little areas. Uh,